Welcome to the Dirt Journal, episode number 103 on the Quest for Details channel. In this episode, we will cover the changes in my tiny backyard terrace garden from midsummer and full fruit to early winter as the leaves fall and tiny creeks rise with much needed water. We will also look at what I did to increase water retention 100% in the veggie area and stop by the major family farm to see its progression into late fall and the end of growing season. So, lots of changes. Let's go ahead and wander through the garden. There's a hundred in nine in Napa County. That is usually down by the coast. Remember that I am up in the hills outside of Napa Valley. Just still in Napa County, but in what's considered the hot and arid zone. And yeah, we got scorched off surroundings in all directions so it's very desert like there is no under canopy or shade anywhere to give the wind that 15 degrees of coolness so oh it's hot 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 like where is a hundred on here yeah there's the hundred mark and we're reaching way up there and this is in a covered area so, that's what's up. It has been 114 degrees, 104 degrees, 110 degrees. Anyhow, that's what it does up here every year, all year long. Um, well, not all year, all summer long. All hot season, every year, for sure. Day after day. And uh, so even though I wet this down, I wet down all these barrels super good. Um, after a one or two day period is literally the ground is cracking again. And that's good organic soil. So I'm gonna go ahead and use some wood chips and apply it to this area to hold the weeds down. It'll also start to condition the soil. It'll hold moisture in an incredible way, even one inch. And I'm gonna put down four inches, but one inch will hold moisture under it in a hundred degrees for a week at a time where it would usually evaporate after one day of full sun with nothing on it you can consider that like raw skin and we're going to go ahead and and put some bandages on it let it hold its life juices in so i have uh wood chips that were free from the side of the road and um yeah i'm gonna apply them so this is the before so about three truck loads later because I actually went ahead and started doing the whole rest of the garden. I had it covered in these wood chips. Now, uh, these are from the local fires that we've had, and the roadside crews have left massive piles of wood chips. It's really easy to go to your local county yard and get permission. You'll see piles at pullouts, and these days everyone is really used to people um, obtaining wood chips that way and you'll see places where they're actually placed for the public to be able to access them in some cities and urban and rural areas.
So I put this bark here, um, beginning of the season about a month and a half ago now. It was just bare dirt, and I'm always blown away. Look how quick this is just wood chips from the local fire, so it's mostly oak and digger pine. But as you lay it down, not only keeps other weeds from growing, Although it seems to be super friendly and gentle on uh, wildflower seeds because they don't like to compete with grasses, but and holds moisture. But it also it just goes crazy wherever you put wood chips in your soil. There's just be massive microbial growth. So an example is the second that you scoot this down. Remember, I I just piled this in here and raked it. This is a really good spot all through here. It's just gotten punky. Let me show you some close-ups. All of that white that you see is the threads of like the myceliums and other different funguses that are there. And they have just woven this together so it's like a mat. And that actually breaks down all of this solid material. Look at that. It's, that's just literally woven together with it. And that's what breaks everything down and feeds it to the roots of all of these trees. That's where they get all of their nutrients from besides the sun. In fact, plants a lot of the time take about 40 to 50 percent of their solar energy that they gather and pump it down into the ground through their roots to feed these because these do a much better job at spreading out over whole large areas and breaking down stuff and then funneling it all back to the tree without the tree having to grow all of those roots to reach all of the different spots where the nutrients is. But yeah, just a total, this is just fungus mat and the littlest things destroy this, just being exposed to oxygen, um, UV light, sunlight in general. It wants to be at the perfect depth and temperature, but it is just the living canvas underneath everything that's co connecting all of the roots from these plants to these trees to those trees and that's how quick it happens so that's how we made our way through the hot summer months in one of the most arid regions in California during a drought directly after having our entire area burnt during fires. There was a lot of good fruit and a lot of salsa that was had and eaten. Now we're going to go ahead and jump ahead about a month and a half to where the rain started and they started early for us. So here is the deal. It's raining in California. It is uh, October 23rd and I live on what's usually a little creek and in the last 24 hours actually 12 hours it started at midnight our little creek is going up crazy style see I got all new bark in here so I gotta do because I live on a slope and uh, all my landscaping here will wash away but yeah look at that that's uh, so there's the road. That's our little road that we use, a little dirt road to get out to uh, out to the river and stuff. Right down this way is Pewter Creek, which is a huge old river. So we had huge fires that burnt all of this slope here and denuded it, and so there's massive amounts of. Uh, water coming down and shedding off these things are usually little teeny tiny trickles are huge and then this does this every year on a good a good rain it's just uh happened all at once this time <laughs> so it came up pretty fast usually right here there's a little green lawn that i kind of chopped out of the willows and then it goes down into the little creek bed and you can see it's all the way big and uh, this is my easement that's, well it's not my easement, but it's the easement that runs below my property here. My, and uh, yeah, then there's usually a little flat spot. I mean, this is good. We've been to bone dry. 
This little teeny tiny creek usually runs out to a big flowing green river that fills up Lake Berryessa Ornia. And uh, this year it got to bone dry and of course all the lakes almost to river bottoms. So this is a good thing, um, even though, wow, pretty intense. I gotta get bark on here, you can see it starts to gather up more and more water and uh, can just form a little creek. It's okay. I'll get out here with bark and rakes and we'll fix all this. It's only going to rain for one more day. And I got to about... Oh, right there. Because, <laughs> you know, the bark, it's, I probably... Uh, I didn't do it last year and I should have. And so it's two years behind. And in some spots I have rock built up. But in other spots it, it doesn't have the bark. And it just turns into a muddy mess. Especially with the dogs running on it. Other than that, we're doing okay, and the little sprout sprouting everywhere really help. We're heading off into winter here. It's not even Halloween yet, so this is a good thing. Really close to that road over there. Yeah, so that's already about, oh, 10, 15, maybe 10 feet deep. Oh, there goes a football. And all my landscape can come back to life. This has just been dead, dead, dead dry. In California. See that? That's a pine tree, as big as one of these. And this creek can flood uh, like this ten times this winter. So that's why when you're out here rock hounding and you look up and there's you know logs stuck in the trees ten foot above your head, this is why. There's boulders down there the size of these moving around in this, slamming around, clunking together. You can hear them. That's what rivers do. Tomatoes will be done soon. They're still blooming, but they don't know. They're out of light. And keeping in mind, you haven't been be able to see uh, water in this. It's been dry. Oh, look at that log just mowing down those bushes. Here goes a big old jam. Wherever that goes down to and gets stuck on now, it'll cause another dam. Ooh. That's part of what's happened is we've had so much uh, bush growth during the dry seasons that it's filled up uh, the creek bed with mass. So the water gets forced to the edges, which is a natural cycle, but... Oh, yep, we're on the road down there. So there are just log after log shooting down this like battering rams. And you can see just since we've been washing, the bushes here are gone. We go with snags coming down. End of the season. Let's go take a walk through the garden and look. Almost as the season ends, another one starts so soon because this will be wrapped in plastic and uh, starting. 
There will seedling soon. But a lot of stuff still standing. You can see it's raining and it will be raining. So these are the last days of the garden cart. Still got apples on the trees. The flowers. I'm uh, getting some tomatoes, but not very much. The peppers are still producing pretty good. And a lot of the other flowers, this is a white borage. It looks like it's coming back. Things like the cucumbers and everything else would be fading out. Zucchinis are still holding. Um, yeah, a lot of the flowers are collapsing over. Big old seed projects happen now. And next year's are already sprouting. Peppers. They've already started uh, tearing out tomatoes and everything else. But that's how it's going here. I'm getting some much needed water in California. And there's the tear out. It started with sunflowers and everything else. A lot still in. All of this, uh, next time you see it, will probably just be bare dirt or a planting garden. The birds are running around having a heyday at this point because there's so many aging seeds everywhere and food. <sighs> yep, this is the game now is run around and, and try and preserve as many seeds as you can because everything that you see here is either food or preserved still, so massive amounts. Wow, it is all flowers sprouting. That's crazy. Yep, it's getting a lot of rain and hasn't had a frost yet. The second that the frost comes, every tomato that you're seeing and half of the vegetables just melt within two days because they become frost damaged. But for now, it's just a late rainy winter garden. <laughs> 